What's up everybody? So the video that you all were waiting for. And it looks like OnePlus has finally started to roll out Oxynos 12.1 based on Android 12 in the beta version for the OnePlus Nord. Instead of Oxynos 12 like on the OnePlus 8 series. And quite a lot of you are waiting for this update to drop as OnePlus Nord has faced a lot of bugs in past. And this might be its last chance to come back to life. As it is also the last major update for this device. And the hardware is still decent if not the best by today's standard. So in this video, we'll go through every little detail that is there to know before you update your device. So before we start, make sure to tap on that subscribe button if you haven't already. And in case you wish to watch this video in Hindi language, here is a card to the BitTech Hindi channel. First up, you should not hurry up and install this update because it is the first beta version and it is bound to have minor bugs and issues. Second, do take a backup before you update, though this will not format your data. Alright, now let's see how you can install this one on your device. Well, the process is really simple and you are used to it. So basically like you install every update, just download the zip file from the link in description area or just use Oxygen Updater application from the Play Store. So download the application and click on this settings icon. Now choose open beta full in the update method and enable advanced mode toggle from the advanced settings. Now just go back to the home page and you will see that the update is available and now you can install it easily. So all you have to do is just go to settings, now go to system, choose system updates from the list and click on this gear icon on the top right corner. Now choose local upgrade and choose a zip file that we just downloaded. And this will start installing Oxynos 12.1 Open Beta 1 on your OnePlus Nord. And I'll post a full review after using it extensively, so stay tuned for that as well. And now this will take some time to install, so leave your device as is for some time. And I'm fast forwarding the process just to save your time. Okay, so after it is done, you will see this reboot option. And that means the update has successfully installed. Now to complete the process, all you have to do is reboot your device. And there you go. Now your device is on Oxynos 12.1 Open Beta 1. And as you know, things are very different here as compared to Oxynos 10 and 11. And this device overall has seen such a big transition in the past two years, like from 10 to 11 and so on. But one can only hope for the best as Oppo won't stop at all. So you know, instead of it, let's just focus on what it brings to the table for us. First up, the boot animation has changed here and now it looks something like this. Now let's have a look at the benchmark scores after this update and let's see if there is an improvement on paper. So I tested out this Oxynos 12 with Geekbench as well as Android 2. And on Oxynos 11 in the Geekbench test, the device used to score 594 in single core and 1828 in the multi-core score. And now the device scored a bit better than before, like around 608 in single core and 1809 in the multi-core score. On the other hand, on Android 2, the device scored around 4,7000 points, which is better than Oxynos 11 as well. First up, right from the lock screen, the fingerprint scanner animation has changed now, and it looks something like this. And for what it's worth, the fingerprint scanner works really fine as it should. Secondly, in the launcher, the Oxynos icon pack which was gone from Oxynos 12, it is now here on this Oxynos 12.1. And even the launcher looks a bit better now as compared to what we saw on Oxynos 12 on the OnePlus 8 series. And I welcome this change. Coming to the camera application, so the version of camera app has also been bumped up from 6.0.139 to 7.0.29. But it is still the OnePlus camera and not the Oppo camera application. So the UI is similar and all the modes are similar as well. So here are some random camera samples that I took just to give you a rough idea about the image quality. And I'll test it out even more and post an in-depth review with all the samples. But for now, here is what they look like. So as was the case with OnePlus 8 series, and you can see nothing much has changed here. And also there are no new features that are introduced with this Oxynos 12.1 on the OnePlus Nord. And similar is the case for videos as well. So let's see how well it does in various scenarios. About the overall performance, well it does seem good for now and as compared to Oxynos 11. And the haptics can be felt at a bit more places, like in the launcher and other settings. Though it is not strong by default, and you can tweak that basically under the haptic settings, overall it's a good touch nonetheless. 
Also the UI does lag from time to time here and there and we cannot force 90 hertz like we used to. So that is something I definitely miss. And I'll also test out the battery life after this update. And yes, the battery tab has also changed here. Now you also have that high performance mode. So the device won't stay in maximum performance like before. And you'll have to turn this toggle on for the best results while gaming. Speaking about gaming, the gaming mode is also from Oxynos only. But it does have some new features like that voice changer and you can also add any shortcut to open any application which is very helpful. Other than that you have this game focus mode which will block almost everything like your call notifications and whatnot. We also get this new performance settings option where you can decide your priority and choose the kind of performance that you want while gaming. Also, I did play BGMI on this device for a short time and no, there is still no 90fps support or anything like that but overall it works fine on smooth extreme settings. So let's see how the gaming experience turns out to be after this update. And also we cannot force 90hz mode on applications like before but I did find a solution and here is a video on how you can do that. The launcher also looks a bit different now, love it or hate it, it is what it is. And of course it is not the oneplus launcher and you guys know it already. By default we only get these applications so thank god and oneplus for almost no bloatware except facebook apps and we can uninstall them easily and apart from that theme store there is no other bloatware as such. So more or less the system is still clean. Also the hidden space has now moved from the usual left hand side which was very convenient and it has now been moved under privacy settings. So you can set up a different or same pin and you can hide any application or use the app locker feature. And there is also the private space to hide your stuff like images, audio and all other files which will be very handy for some people. So yes, all the features are still present here. There is also this app cloner that works the same way as in Oxygenos 11. And you cannot use it on all applications, just the ones supported which isn't handy definitely. And before I forget, the DRM level is Widevine L1, so Netflix and all other applications will work in Full HD. Also all the payment applications will work as well, as it passes the safety net. Also there are some widgets from Android 12, which weird enough can be added once you long press on the home screen. And you have to tap on this plus button on the left hand side. And yes, there is also some material you support on Google applications, so there is that. The app closing animation and everything feels fluid as of now and I don't see any issues here. Though you might get annoyed to see the oneplus shelf every time you swipe down from the top right corner. So you can turn it off easily. On the shelf screen just click on this care icon on the top right corner and turn off this shelf feature. That's it. Also yes the shelf is kinda new now. So here is what it looks like with this new UI and it has some refinements here and there along with some new widgets like the spotify widget and the earphone widget as well which is handy. Plus the applications like oneplus dialer and messages from oxynos 11 just won't work now. So don't even try and yes you still have google dialer only. So if call recording is your priority stick to oxynos 11 for now or else you can just disable the call recording prompt in dialer as I explained in one of the shots and here is a link to that. Lastly in the launcher part the wallpaper picker has also changed and it looks something like this and it brings some new animations with it as well. Overall it feels smooth just like Oxynos 11 but doesn't carry the same feel. One annoying thing that I saw is with this privacy request pop up in almost every single place. And oneplus is basically asking to collect more and more data and as well as the permission that the application needs. It just doesn't look nice and it isn't necessary to agree but you'll have to just in case you have to use all the features. Now going to the settings and the UI has changed here as well. Which is fine and it looks good enough I would say. One more thing that got changed here is the customization tab and it is now called personalizations. And here we have a bunch of options like before. So you do get the always on display with all the older themes that were there. Including your inside AOG, Bitmoji and the canvas AOD. And it's good to see all of them. Though the canvas AOD has been updated now and it has even more options to choose from in case you are into that. Plus the warp charge animation is gone now and it is now known as Vook charge which is a minor change though I don't like that name. In the icons tab you can tweak some icons and shapes and you can apply custom icon packs as well. But you can still tweak the accent color thankfully 
and i also love the fingerprint animations here especially the fireworks one so some extra animations have been added and the fingerprint scanner is fast and responsive about that theme store well i don't like to apply any theme here just to make it look even more bloated and it looks kind of funny to me so oneplus is just trying to earn more money by selling content like xiaomi and other brands lastly we also have this dark mode toggle which has finally brought pitch black dark mode with it and i'm quite happy with it of course so thank you oppo for that and yes you also have the option to force dark mode and schedule it as well so no change there overall i like this update as of now but only time will tell how well this does and if there is some lag in day to day usage along with the battery stats rest if i miss out on any tiny stuff i'll be covering it out really soon so this was the oxynos 12 beta version for the oneplus nord and if you do end up liking this video make sure you tap on that subscribe button and hit that like button as well thanks for watching this video and i'll see you guys in the next one